Welcome to the Sankofa Ancestor Shrine, where every week we invite spiritual black folk to reconnect with our ancestors as we journey through the crossroads. Please consider donating through patreon.com slash Sankofa Shrine. Ancestors, blood of our blood and bone of our bone, we honor you from the roots deep in the soil to the skies high above. As we move into this new month, we will find ourselves inundated with all of the different responsibilities that we have, responsibilities that are monthly, responsibilities from things that started many, many months ago before all of the modern problems today that are coming at us right this moment. Things keep piling onto our plate more and more. And we ask that you help to hold some of this burden, that you help us to find clever and easy ways to overcome these without overstressing ourselves and pulling ourselves in too many directions. Help us to find ways to prioritize what's really important to us, what really matters deep in our hearts, and help us to find ways to Help the, those around us who may be looking for someone to lean on. Help us to find ways to help others. This is a time where community needs to build and we need to find solutions, real solutions for each other, solutions that can aid each other, solutions that can aid ourselves, solutions that can aid the world at a global scale, the earth beneath our feet, which still needs attention even as everything else occurs. Ancestors help us to remember the great and powerful bloodline, the Ashe, the energy that runs all the way behind us and all the way before us. Help us to be inspired by that. And we thank you for the inspiration that you've given us already for this beautiful day, for this beautiful sunlight, for the beautiful connections we've managed to make with others and ourselves as we've spent some time at home and separating from other people. Ashe. broken. I need a healing. So we ask that you heal us with your elements air, fire, water, earth. <laughs>
Welcome, beloved, to the Sankofa Ancestor Shrine. I'm your host, Sacred Woman Practitioner Tatami. Today I am out in my living room. So we've got some terrible lighting. We've got some loud children and no door really between us, but I think somehow we will manage. I also, I tried to get my microphone, but I need some, another piece for y'all. It's always something else, isn't it? It's always something else. So hopefully next week we will have the microphone. So that will make this type of thing a non-issue. I have so many wonderful things to talk about today. I thought we would start by reading a poem that I particularly enjoy from, I believe it's Nejma by Nayira Wahid. This is um, just one of the few books that, um, what was I going to say? Oh, the patrons were able to help me get, I think this was like the first year that I had the Sacred Sister Circle. She, her books all went on sale for like two bucks a pop on Amazon. And so we were all in there. We were all in there. The sales went wild, right? Everybody was going crazy buying themselves a set. And because I was like, I wanted to see what the fuss was about. And I had a few, I had $5 to spend on, you know, the set. Um, I went ahead and got it. And so it's been a really interesting, I'm always trying to find ways to add it. Hold on. So I'm always trying to find ways to put it into our sessions, but for some reason it always seems to blend in on the shelf. Both of my copies, Salt, always seems to blend in, and this one always seems to blend in. But today I decided to pick it up. And also some of it, you know, these are some of the poems. So obviously good portions of the books are not really something that I will be reading out loud right now. Although that could be a fun meditation. Let me see. So we're on page 49 if you have this book. Um, oh, and I also forgot to say, um, after this, the other things we're going to be talking about today are um, we have some face jug talk, some ugly jug talk. I have a couple to share with you from what I've been working on these last few days and weeks. And um, what else? Oh, and I wanted to talk about prayer cards, making your own prayer cards. Just another way to have a tool in your life that can consistently work with you. These are things that I'm going to be putting into my Shopify shop on RitualReady.com um, probably this Friday. So if that's something you're like, girl, I'm not about to sit here and be painting out <laughs> no prayer cards or whatever. But you can print them if you have a printer. I don't. I need to get one of those. That's probably next on the list. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, I think that, you know, if you want me to make it for you, I'm going to definitely be making, um, traveling ancestor altars. And these are the types of things that are going to be going in them. So you'll be able to get them just on their own as well. Um, but yes, so let's get started first with our poem and then we'll get into how to make and do these other things and what, you know, how they can be used in your spiritual practice as a conjure person. As you are, says the universe, after you answer. As you are, says the universe, before you answer. As you are, says the universe, when you answer. As you are, says the universe, how you answer. As you are, says the universe. Why you answer. Because you are happening now, right now, right at this moment, and you're beautiful, and your happening is beautiful. The thing that both keeps me alive and brings me to my knees. You don't even know how breathtaking you are. As you are, says the universe through tears. As you are, you are the prayer. I absolutely enjoy this poem. Every time I read it, I keep a little $1 bill here in the book just so that when I forget about it and then I run back into it, I can always bump back into this poem because 
this one I think is so powerful because it reminds us to, to not be stagnant, right? It reminds us to get up and move, sacred movement. The second you stand with intention, that's sacred movement, right? It's not simply um, yoga, womb dancing, um, pagan dancing under the moonlight, right? Everybody wants to do all the high level, super crazy, fancy stuff. But don't forget, each step around your house can be sacred movement, right? And it's getting up and it's doing and it's infusing and it's believing in what you have at this moment. And I just think... Um, Yes, the, the, the fact that right now what you are is just so beautiful. This is just such a powerful reminder that, you know, you do have power within you. You do have something within you that can fight towards certain things, that can um, alleviate pains and suffering. And you also do have the power to reach out and ask for help or uh, reach out to others because everybody else is happening at the same time, right? And everybody else... Sometimes we do need, you know, other people to reach out to come to us. So I think making that first step, especially as people on our own sacred path who are looking to spread our message of peace and wellness and connection with nature and connection with each other as communities, as black people, but also as the global community, right? We're learning a lot about the global community and just how important it is to all, you know, be up to, to par because the planet really is honestly only as good as the country doing the worst right is uh, they they are you know it affects everybody and i think we're seeing now during this pandemic especially during people's responses to the pandemic as compared to others just how much it impacts the world when people it's it's harder to tell when it's like chocolate slavery mining right for diamonds or fuel um those costs those prices it's there it, it feels like a hidden silent victim when it's in your house once that item is in your house you don't quite remember that there were chinese workers jumping off the factory right but with the pandemic i think it illuminates just how much it's all connected and how important it is for everybody to be on the same page to be able to trust each other because like now it's really highlighting where those failures come in especially you know we have like a president who who's he he honestly is like thinks like everybody's out to get him for a lot of things so he responds at, accordingly and his denial of how you know everything impacts each other i mean he wants it to he wants to be able to say that it's not all impacting each other, right? But at the same time, he recognizes that it does because he wants workers to get back to work, sacrifice themselves so that the economy will get better. It's all just very interesting to see how it connects and how, you know, just a few people who are not willing to adhere themselves to that community, to perhaps give up a creature comfort for the community or, um, you know, take on a new responsibility for the betterment of all. Uh, it, it's very interesting to watch this all connect um, and come together. And I hope it, it opens people's eyes to how important it is for us all to all be connected um, and to all understand how we're connected, should I say. We are all connected, but to understand how we're all connected. So at any rate, um, as people who are going through, you know, our own sacred journey, we're connecting with our ancestors, with these very tangible things, nature, right? And then the spirit, the ashe that's within them is also something that I think Black Americans, we know inherently well. And so I do think that that's something that we can spread on to others at the same time, even as we sit in our homes, even as we sit here. It doesn't have to be the whole global global world, but it can be just your family or just yourself or just your friends or just one person, one thing that you're continuing to dedicate yourself and um, put yourself into and with. So we're going to put this away. I do recommend this for just like, if you ever have like a cozy day where you just want to like chill with I don't know if it's a cold day, you've got your, your hot chocolate or your coffee, your sweet coffee or tea, or maybe if it's a nice summer day, I, I always love to make juices and like hibiscus teas and things like that in the summer. It's so nice. I just, 
actually got a crystal light, which I don't usually get those because they're just sugar and stuff, but something in my brain really needed a comfort food. Um, and so, yeah, I remember those from my childhood. I remember the peach tea. My mom always had her teas and I was like, oh, I really want some of that today. So I went ahead and indulged. And I know that once I drink, like, once I'm, like, halfway through the package, I know I'm just going to be, like, it's too much. It's not even that big of a package, but, you know, when you're not used to it. All right, so where am I? <clears throat> so I have here my journal. Sorry to bust out this huge official. I guess, it, you know, some would call it, like, the grimoire. I do have stuff like that in here, but um, this one I've only just started. And so I had been writing here in the rent about um I've been planning out some prayer cards because I was trying to think we we seem to struggle really hard especially with being able to keep things private being able to keep things safe and I do think as we're about to go into these next few months I think it's going to be you know more necessary than ever to be able to have an altar near you maybe one that you keep with you at all times and at like um, that will help you. I mean, in case of evictions, I think those are probably on the horizon. Um, and I think people are going to need to have smaller ones on them to, to take with them. People are going to be finding themselves in much smaller living spaces. So being able to have some big thing where you've stacked everything up and like, like, you know, everything's there, that's not going to be as much of a reality for people. Um, so that's why I was thinking, um, small things will really help help small things will really help people be able to um you know small altars will really be able to help people still stay connected um and find ways to you know connect in the future in places and times when they it maybe ha would have felt too difficult so these things i'm gonna say are for you know suggestions for people to use for a travel altar or for just a travel like spiritual thing you know you don't have to have a whole um you know a face jug on you you can have just like i'm about to say some prayer card ideas and um i haven't written the prayers for them yet but i just drew some pictures to get me started in thinking about what I would want those prayers to be. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is some of this. This is some of the stuff I've been working on as I've procrastinated my um, Sanab Freedom Quilt project. I've been, I planned it out, but I can't find my hot glue gun. And I keep, I always see it when I don't need it. And then when I need it, I cannot find it. That is the way of the hot glue gun in this household. I like, and I know where the, the little, you know, the glue is for it. I have that and I put it away for this project, but the gun still remains elusive. So at any rate, so these prayer cards that I've been creating are to really, um, and go, you know, go ahead and copy the same ones, um, onto your paper. I mean, you know, it, just so you can carry something around in your purse or, um, you know, what have you. And, um, essentially I want them to be something, you know, the same way that we use prayer cards in the Abrahamic faith of having, you know, this imagery that evokes something spiritual as well as um, the prayer on the back to help guide us with language. So I think, you know, when you're feeling especially capable of, you know, using your sacred words and creating a um, poem, it would, you know, be great if you wrote that down. And then those days where the words fail you, right, you'll be able to have something tangible to pull out. Or, you know, you're you're in a, a hurry or you need to relax after work real quick before you start the commute home. Or you have to, you know, you've been having, uh, you, you heard bad news, that sort of thing. There are a lot of times where you can't just, you know, say totally effectively or you would like something to start you off. So being able to make yourself some prayer cards, put it on them. I know you can buy blank prayer cards that can, you know, come apart real easy. But I mean, I don't see why you would buy those just because they're I'm like sold in bulk, you know, for churches. But you could use index cards. Sometimes they're blank on both sides. Sometimes they're blank on one side and got the lines on the other. You could use business cards because they're, you know, that's pocket. And then they've got a little bit of strength to them. You know what I'm saying? Um, business cards tend to have that little bit of like, 
hard, socky feel to them, so they'd be like a little sturdier than just using a random piece of paper. Um, but if you were to use a random piece of paper, uh, like you know, make yourself some some glue that thinned out and make sure it's really evenly put, and then put two pieces of paper together, and then it, it glued together, it will be a little more stiff. But just you know, make sure it's all flat and evenly spread. And then you can put it under like a book so it will flatten, hopefully not be like all warped and stuff. So at any rate, um, so I have my three main themes that I focused on for these prayer cards was ancestors, spirit, and um, nature. So some of them kind of obviously the themes seem to overlap a little bit. But um, so for this one is more for ancestors, um, connecting with them. It's a lady in her ritual whites. And um, I thought and underneath the tree, which is, you know, symbolism of the ancestors. And um, I thought, you know, this was really reminded me of, you know, the prayers that you see, the connections you see. I went to an event in Oakland, actually recently where um not recently i want to say it was last summer where you know it was all underneath this huge tree and everybody was wearing white it was very lovely it was very beautiful um here i have the, the crossroads for a symbolism of spirit um i just felt like the crossroads is one of those symbols um there's you know the crossroads man there's a symbolism of being at the crossroads of choosing the path of going to the crossroads when you have certain rituals leaving um you know gifts at the crossroads offerings at the crossroads um so i felt the crossroads was really important one to put there um here i have somebody sitting on a hill um i also have this older gentleman i'm gonna put them in packs of like three i think because i think you know three of them in your ancestor altar um would be a really you know wonderful thing to have to choose one of them to to use at the time so um i have an elder over here um and so you know i have um this one is for you know, spirit we have nine dots for the ancestors here we have um the ocean the water uh for i believe that one was nature too and this one was spirit for soul and um then finally i have the evil eye and we have some prayer hands and my very final one was um this moon cycles i don't think i'm gonna put this circle one in the middle for the ones i did i couldn't decide what i wanted for this and so then i colored over it but i think i'm probably gonna put a a dinker symbol in the middle there so at any rate um these I'm going to have, you know, prayers on the back. I'll put them into little th squares and put the prayers on the back. And um, I was already thinking, let me see, where was I? I've lost my train of thought. All right, we're going to get started then on these because this is basically where my train of thought was headed at any rate. Um, so I have these little ones made. I made these out of polymer clay. Um, but, you know, anybody can obviously, um, oh, this one got like a little ruined on the bottom. I have to redo the bottom. So sad. At any rate, um, I made these ones out of polymer clay, which is this right here. I happen to have, um, just some natural colored polymer clays. Um, but I also tend to, typically my medium is, um, terracotta clay because I like it because it's just that red it's like the earth it's um yeah it's just really natural I really like terracotta clay but I thought these ones would be really cute to make and I happen to have the clay for it whichever one you choose just make sure you know how the clay is supposed to be dried <laughs> because you know these ones you have to bake I know ceramic you have to bake the um terracotta I'm is um air dry and i'm pretty sure there are you know other types of air dry clay as well um so i have here some polymer clay probably should have gotten myself some water but we'll see we'll see how it goes all right so um i'm not sure if you've seen the original video i uploaded for the face jugs but face jugs 
are a ritual or I'm sorry, a item that we've made, a spiritual item that we've made since Africa. And so it's hard to say, I, I don't want to say it was a jug because in Africa it was not a jug. It was a whole body and they called them Nkisi dolls. This is the Congo. We're from, uh, generally African Americans are from West Africa in the Congo. And when they came here, very much ever, everything really intermingled, right? And people were using what they could and learning what they could. And um, this is a good thing, right? Really uh, added a lot of beauty to hoodoo and conjure, the way we were able to all come together and utilize our spirits, especially as West Africa and the Congo were some of the last places in Africa to fall to Christianity. Um, they managed to keep the West African religions for a really, really long time. Um, much longer than the rest of Africa, for the most part. Now, um, when they came here, we were there are many, many things we were not allowed to do. And one of them was we were not allowed to bury our dead, give them you know, proper services. And so these were things that had to be done in private to continue to honor them because we are spiritual people. Of course, we are a, fam a family. We loved each other. We're humans. <laughs> so we um, had to use the face jugs because there were also people who, who had skills, right? Many people who were enslaved, most people who were enslaved had wonderful skills, right? They were farmers, potters. Um, and some were writers, right? We have um, the story of one of our most famous potters was he didn't even put a face on them. He put scriptures and poems and small word sentences that he would write. And that was his version. It was a very beautiful, powerful version of the process. Um, so he, um, so, and there were many other people, most made faces. Um, and so, um, Hold on. So we would use them for burial in the sense that you could put the person's items in there. And of course, the ugly face was to scare um, away spirits that would stop them, perhaps evil spirits, hateful spirits. This is a pretty evil land, especially at the time, um, from stopping them from getting to the spirit realm, to heaven. So they would absolutely find themselves... Um, having to use these types of jugs which are still being excavated and they get sold for like hundreds of thousands of dollars online in auctions um which obviously keeps a lot of black people out of their own heritage and culture and mu black museums can't afford them that sort of thing um so it, it becomes comes kind of conundrum right and we could perhaps be able to afford and so you know we can't afford anything and we're Kind of at a in a place where you know this history kind of gets taken from us we can't afford to excavate or arc the archaeologists whatever the term is make it an archaeological site all up and down the south you know to find these things but treasure hunters absolutely um you know track down where they think they might be and they dig them up and they sell them of course the jugs were not only used for burial, however. They were also used for things like um, working their roots, for protection of the home. One would be put on the back porch or the front porch um, to uh, serve as protection in the home. And um, with ones these small, you can obviously put things in them, um, herbs, um, what have you, and then seal the top. I did that for one of my birthdays, I want to say last year. Um, last year, I had put it inside um, some different items. I forget what it was exactly, a variety of things, and covered it up. I was a terracotta, though. It was one made of, and like not covered in any kind of sheen or anything. So it would have broken down pretty easily. I put it in the river. And, um, you know, there's so there are so many things you can do. So for these ones, if you have one that you've made for your own, um, one that you've made for your own travel altar, or, you know, you've bought one, um, you can use it and put things in it initially, you know, uh, put like the things you might put in a mojo bag inside of here and then seal it up 
and um, you can keep that inside of your travel altar and so it will always have those items in it. You can keep them empty and use it to, um, you know, pour water in, keep the keep water offerings in as your cup while you have it at your altar set up and you're praying. You can use it for, you know, there's so many different things that you could use it for empty as well as filling it with something and making it for a specific purpose. Um, or just, you know, you just keep it as it is and smoke cleanse and spray it with your cologne or Florida water or what have you. Um, you can use it and put uh, small offerings inside for the ancestors for that day. Because um, the ancestors understand if you have to break down the altar every day or if this altar is obviously a travel altar. So, you know, you have another altar at home or what have you. Um, because, you know, sometimes you want to have an altar for different things, or sometimes you really, the only altar you can have is a small travel altar. Um, and so that's what these are really for, is to try and help out people who are in that space, um, is to find ways to still connect, still be doing your, your African traditional religion thing, um, but, you know, you not feel like you have to be doing all the most or like you're not doing enough because you can't do the most. So other things that, um, let me go back in my journal here. Other things that you might find yourself wanting to put into this travel altar. We have, um, you could be doing nine pennies. If you don't have pennies because you're like, girl, pennies are money. And nine pennies, I mean, you could add that up, start to get to your 100 pennies, that's a dollar. Get enough dollars, you could be getting a whole bunch of things with those dollars, right? So you could be using the, the bottle caps of, you know, your beers. Um, you could use, the nine pennies are for divination, though. So if, let's say, you're like, girl, I do not throw pennies, I throw bones. Put your bones in there. If I, you're saying, I don't do any of that, I read tarot. I would suggest getting a mini tarot deck specifically to put in there or maybe making your own mini tarot deck or just getting a small deck um, and like get a dr small drawstring bag maybe. Um, uh, my bags are probably not going to be big enough to hold a whole tarot deck but a mini tarot deck absolutely. So it will just kind of be up to you on that. Uh, somebody needs to make a black owned t mini tarot deck. We need a mini tarot deck. I keep trying to speak it into existence. Somebody, anybody. All right, the nine pennies can be put into a tiny bag or the nine, you know, bottle caps can be put into a small bag. Um, you can use one of the coins, be a different type of coin or bottle cap, be a different looking bottle cap. Um, but, you know, the, you, you want the, the, un, the, you want the odd number of coins or caps so that you can you know get a definitive yes no type answers um with you know heads or tails um and you know get your yes no answers that way you can skip all that use a pendulum so there are you know your divination method will be your divination method and it will kind of be up to you one of the things i also want to say is if you're using nine pennies or if you're using a um or you could use nine mercury dimes if you really fancy if you really special you used nine silver coins i don't know any other type of coin that's silver um i don't i think most american coins we just use nickel in them now all the silver looking ones we just use that's all nickel um but at any rate you could use the the dates on them could be something that has to do with you could be something that has to do with someone you love, your ancestors specifically, maybe the day they died, maybe their, or the year they died, their year they were born, um, what, whichever it is, you know what I mean? If you have a special ancestor that you really work with, you can get coins that coincide with years that have to do with them, you know what I'm saying? And um, this can start to get really personal in ways that, you know, normally people wouldn't even think of. And so, you know, finding ways to make your um, travel altar really yours is going to be, um, or, you know, whatever altar you have, maybe you keep this on your regular altar and you're keeping up, you know, ideas for the big altar you have at home because you have your own spot and you can do that. All right, so then we have, my idea was to put some prayer cards, obviously. A tea light candle, some people like to use the light. You know, normally I always suggest an oil lamp, but an oil lamp is not really that travel friendly. That's where I think those tea lights can come in handy. And if you're really fancy, you can paint your tea lights and then have them all be ready to go beautiful. So, you know, you can paint the bottoms in different designs. Just very simple, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be crazy. Or you can use washi tape. 
I, it, I think it's W-A-S-H-I, the Japanese tape that's all thin and pretty glittery and put that around the bottom of the tea light. Boom. Simple. Beautiful. So, um, and tea lights can be handmade. I just realized that I, there are kits on Amazon I saw where you could make soy candles all by yourself so you could put in, you know, essential oils that you prefer, herbs that you prefer, sprinkle the top with some rose petals. You know, you can make these really pretty, really fancy. Um, what was my next part? Put a cinnamon stick. Um, that's a very cheap, cleansing beautiful and it gets that fire in your belly you know what I'm saying when you smell cinnamon I like the smell of burning the cinnamon my husband cannot stand it but he also can't stand sage and he also I think the only one he was okay with was palo santo but I don't just burn palo santo for just no reason I like to keep that one partially because um you know it's a very sacred plant and it's being over harvested um, so I try and keep, cut back on that, um, as well. And I just try and use it for really specific, special events when I need to. Um, and sage, because black Americans don't really have, there's no historic connection. There's more historic connection to tobacco, you know, burning tobacco would be more historically correct for an African American than burning sage. And sage is also being over harvested because everybody in American culture is kind of become an American culture, spiritual pagan thing. Um, but I just don't have that much connection to Sage personally, and uh, I'm Afro Latina, so Palo Santo is actually more spiritually in my bloodline than Sage. So I just, you know, it's up to you. You know what I'm saying? It's up to you. What do you want? And also, uh, if you'll notice with the cinnamon stick and the tea light candle, I hope you're gonna invest in a very pretty altar. I mean, not altar. Uh, what was I gonna say? Lighter. Um, and if you get, um, a refillable one, I think, which you should, I think uh, you can get really beautiful ones that really reflect your inner personality and make you happy. You know, don't just feel like it all has to be this one type of theme if, if that's not your thing. But, you know, if that is your thing, if you're like, I like everything to match and when it opens up and it looks cohesive, that makes me feel good. But for some people, you know, if they open up and they see, you know, something very comforting, a comforting image, their favorite uh, character or colors or, you know what I'm saying, something very special to them or to an ancestor of theirs who really enjoyed that. And it's kind of a connection between you two. So I, I want to make sure I emphasize it's like not this whole just be sober, serious type of thing. Um, you can really find ways to make it yours and make it special but not be like not feel like you have to be too pretentious about anything um unless that's how you roll which in which case i say go on perfectionist you are still beloved so my next suggestion is to have one of the above a blessing oil florida water or a cologne so a blessing oil you would infuse with whatever herbs and then put it in a small vial that can't hopefully has like a screw top so that it doesn't spill everywhere it's the, the prayer right there but um usually you can find something decent for that so um you can use your blessing oil so you can anoint your forehead you can anoint your face jug, um, that sort of thing with your, you know, before you start your prayers, maybe meditate by rubbing the oil onto your face jug. Um, so what I did here, I just started making it without explaining. Um, I have a circle about this big. You're going to stick your finger in. And now I got my thumb in there and I'm going to work around it and create a little half bowl. I'm going to do this twice. Put those bowls together. And that, my friend, is a face jug. You're going to make these two bowls and um, you're going to just make a little hole on the top. And that's what you're seeing here. That's all we've got. So back to what I was saying, Florida water. You can make your own, right? You infuse your vodka with the different um i have um in my book punani proverbs on amazon i do have a recipe for florida water but you can use what you have you know use cloves bay leaves fresh flowers um cinnamon um 
essential oils if that's your thing if not i don't usually put the too much essential oils in my florida water i'm just like that's just not my thing but because that's mostly because that's basically once you start putting like essential oils into it you basically just made cologne because that's what original colognes basically were were like vodka i know that there's like perfumers alcohol which you should totally get if you know you have the money to spend on things like that um but if not if you want to make your own cologne just you know use vodka as your base and add your essential oils and you can use your florida water with this and create yourself quite a wonderful you know concoction to um use as a cologne and so that way you can also make it really your own right make your own scents that go with the ancestors make several that go with several different ancestors with the florida water and the cologne because they're liquids i would suggest getting like a little spray like maybe a little perfume one to keep the keep in there and you know obviously you'll have a bigger batch if you've made it yourself or you can just purchase a eau de cologne they sell them all over the place and there are a lot of traditional ones um, I think biglizconjure.com, she sells, not only does she sell like all these essential oils, all these oils that you could purchase to just put one in your thing, but she also does sell some of those name or brand type colognes that you could have gotten in Haiti or where have you back in the day. So these are options that you have. Again, for anoint these can be used for anointing yourself for anointing the um, face jugs, for doing all of those things. I'm personally working on a cologne to put in the face jug um, because I think that would be a really wonderful thing to have. And also I noticed a lot of people have Florida waters out there, but not a lot of people have a cologne. All right, so I'm gonna take these two halves, which aren't really halves. I didn't do that great of a job of making this one as big but we'll see what we can do here it's because my two balls weren't very even i think is my issue so i put them together and then i just start to pinch oh. and some parts you're, you're going to realize like oh i need to put my finger inside of it and that will come when we put the hole at the top which I usually do by putting a, using the pencil. So yeah, the trick is you don't want it to be like a big cup with a gaping hole on top, but you also want, um, you also want to have the hole because then you can put things in. Um, traditionally with the, when it was a doll, they filled it up in the belly button. The body was what was filled up. But once it became only the head here in America, we fill up the head. And I like the little heads. I like the little ugly jugs. There's something about them that makes me really, um, just, you know, proud of our ancestors' resourcefulness, the art artistic ability. And also it's just another affirmation about how, um, black art is just, African art especially, is so useful, right? It always has a use beyond what the original use is. It's not just always art for art's sake. There's always seems to be a use and things that should just be a normal thing like a chair or, you know, a bed. It will have that artistic touch put on it, um, a spiritual touch put on it. So there you have it. I have just a very simple... Um, a very simple face jug that I mean obviously needs smoothing out so it doesn't have these seams that are very obvious but that's about all you're gonna do and then you can take your little pieces make um, eyes lips and go look up uh, face jugs at uh, black American face jugs black American ugly jugs should I say and look at Google images and get some inspiration for yourself mine are kind of cute compared to what some people's have some very sharp teeth and scary faces but yes um I just went ahead and pushed him down on the bottom so that he would sit up 
and be the less round up top. But at any rate, that's all you have to do for that. So my last suggestion for your travel altar is to have something that can make noise. Now, if you are making these just for yourself, you can get those little, you know, guido, guidos, is that what they were called? Guidos? It's the, it's like, they are usually shaped like a turtle and you run the, the, the stick up the turtle's back. You can get like mini tiny ones of those and it's like a percussion instrument. Another percussion instrument that's very cheap and small, those little egg shakers, you can get those in wood. Again, both of those are wood instruments, so they could be very beautiful. You could get a tiny singing bowl. I, I don't know how safe it would be, but you could keep that with your travel uh, altar if it has like a little bag that it comes in. You could get a bell, very simple. Ting, you know, you can get a very good, nice one, a small one. Um, you can get really cheap ones, right? You can get those little jingle bells. You can get the little bells that they like put on things as decor. Those things still ring, ring three times. And that's it. You can get, you know, small drum. Um, you can get uh, some, some type of shaker. There are so many types of shakers. There's shakers in Africa. There's shakers in South America. Shakers all through the island. Um, so many different types of, you know, percussion. Just keep that beat. And then that way, when you're out and about, let's say you took your travel altar with you on a nature hike, you're out there and you can just start singing with yourself. You can make a beat for yourself while you're dancing. You can connect with the wind, you know, get yourself a wet wind cleansing. Right, We're always talking about smoke cleansing, but I definitely miss being able to go out and get my, the wind cleansing. And uh, hopefully the world will reopen, right? The parks will reopen and we'll be able to go back out there someday safely soon-ish. But at any rate, you know, if you go out and far enough by yourself, you can enjoy it. And so I, I think the sound is one of those things. Music is one of those things we often overlook making our own and not expecting ourselves to be like professional, the best of the best. But I'm going to wrap this up because we're going on really long and they're having the time of their lives. I've got to finish this up. Um... But at any rate, finding that way to utilize the music to call on the ancestors before you get in the prayer, it can really set the mood, set everything. Once you hear those, that sound, you knock three times, right? But um, sometimes knocking is not always the most effective or available. Clapping three times is always available, though. So this is not strictly necessary. But I do think the sound is something powerful. All right. Oh, their dad is... Okay. This explains a little more. All right. Thank you so much for watching. May your ancestors and spirit guides be with you at every crossroads, and I will see you next time.